It was supposed to be unbreakable, a truck from the future, forged from the same steel as a starship. It promised to shatter every rule of the auto industry. Instead, the rules shattered it, a price tag that ballooned over 50%, and a design so ambitious it declared war on the laws of manufacturing. This wasn't a series of mistakes. It was one, a single decision that set a trap decades in the making. In early 2024, every Cybertruck ever made was recalled. The accelerator pedal could stick, a problem traced back to soap used as a lubricant on the assembly line. But that was just a symptom. The real story was hiding in plain sight, a launch price that jumped from a promised $40,000 to over $60,000, real-world range falling 25% short, and lots filling with unsold trucks. These weren't random failures. They were the inevitable result of one foundational choice, making the skin the skeleton. To understand the recall, we must first understand the steel. Most trucks have a secret. Underneath the paint, there's a sturdy frame, the skeleton. The body panels are just the skin, hiding small imperfections and forgiving minor mistakes. But the Cybertruck had no secrets. Its skin was the skeleton. This exoskeleton was made of a custom, ultra-hard stainless steel. On stage, it could stop a sledgehammer, but on the factory floor, it fought back. Regular car steel is like clay. You can stamp it into deep, flowing curves. This stainless steel was like folding thick card. It doesn't stretch, it creases. That's why the truck is made of flat planes. It's the only shape the metal would allow, but even folding it was a nightmare. The metal has a memory. Bend it 90 degrees, and it springs back to 91. A tiny error of a single degree, invisible on its own, becomes a visible wave when panels meet. You felt it before, the oil canning sound when you press on a cheap metal filing cabinet. Now imagine that on your $80,000 truck. The hardness that made for a great demo also made it a manufacturing nightmare. It chewed through the factory's expensive stamping tools. And because there's no paint to hide behind, every single fingerprint, every scuff from a robot's grip, Every tiny scratch was a potential deal breaker. Entire panels worth thousands were thrown into the scrap heap over cosmetic flaws a coat of paint would have easily concealed. The factory became less of an assembly line and more of a clean room. Workers wore special gloves. Robots were programmed to move with surgical precision. The line slowed to a crawl, haunted by the ghost of a single, perfect, scratch-free finish. Then came the fit. On a normal truck, you can nudge a door into alignment, but you can't nudge an exoskeleton. The entire structure is locked. One misaligned hole and a door gap would knife open from top to bottom. Owners weren't calling it avant-garde, they were calling it crooked. This also had serious consequences for repairs. A simple dent in a normal fender can be pulled, filled, and painted. On the Cybertruck, a parking lot ding often means replacing an entire structural panel a costly, complex procedure that sent insurance premiums soaring and left body shops refusing the work. This steel was also heavy. The mass dragged on the batteries, which dragged on the range. To compensate, Tesla needed more battery cells, which added more weight and more cost. It was a vicious cycle. The very thing that made the Cybertruck tough also made it fragile. Not on the road, but on the assembly line where it mattered most. The origami-like design promised simplicity. Fewer parts, cleaner lines. In reality, flat planes and sharp edges are a magnet for problems. A curved door frame presses a weather seal evenly. A sharp corner creates pressure points, inviting wind noise and water leaks. And that knife edge A-pillar? It creates a vortex of turbulent air right next to your ear. A constant whistle at highway speeds that engineers fought endlessly to silence. The simple look created a complex battle against physics. Then there was the windshield, the largest single piece of glass on any truck. To keep the look clean, they used one giant wiper, the Giga Wiper. It needed a massive motor just to move its nearly four foot blade, especially in ice or snow. But its sheer length meant it would flex. The result, streaks, chatter, and an uncleared patch of glass right in the driver's line of sight. It was a brute force solution to a problem the design itself had created. The armor glass that famously <laughs> failed the steel ball test brought its own issues. It was great at resisting blunt force, yeah. but it was still vulnerable to rock chips. The difference? A cracked windshield on a Ford F-150 is a routine, one-day fix. 
A cracked window on a Cybertruck meant waiting for a specialized, custom-molded part from a single factory, installed by a technician trained for this one. Specific vehicle. The supply chain was a bottleneck by design. The frameless doors added another layer of complexity. The glass had to land perfectly in its channel every time, guided by motors and regulators dialed into the millimeter. There was no frame to hide misalignments. The whole system demanded a level of precision that assembly lines struggled to maintain at scale. The iconography of the truck, its sharp, faceted silhouette, delivered a stunning look, but it also delivered a maintenance headache and a customer service challenge. The shell and its glass weren't just styling, they set rules the factory couldn't consistently follow. Tesla didn't just launch a new truck. It tried to launch three revolutions at once. A new material, a new body structure, and a new factory process sprinting to full speed. The assembly line became a battlefield where design intent clashed with physical reality. The massive cast sections from the Giga Press had to mate perfectly with the unforgiving stainless steel panels. The two sides refused to compromise, so the factory floor became a forest of jigs and clamps, forcing the parts together. Robots, normally the heroes of speed and efficiency, had to be programmed with a new kind of caution. A gripper that could shove an aluminum panel into place would leave a permanent scar on a brushed steel surface. So the robots slowed down. Cycle time stretched. When managers pushed for speed, scrap rates spiked. The assembly line clogged, not with broken parts, but with cosmetically imperfect ones. Human inspectors became the ultimate bottleneck, staring at gleaming surfaces under harsh lights, trying to decide if a faint line was a feature or a flaw. This high-pressure, low-margin-for-error environment created the conditions for the accelerator pedal fiasco. To ease the fit of a pedal pad, a worker used soap as a lubricant, a quick, undocumented shortcut. That simple act planted a time bomb that would later force the recall of every truck. It was a clear sign of a production system under immense stress, where small deviations could have massive consequences. Suppliers were learning on the job, too. Shipments of unique parts like the steer-by-wire system or the giant windshield would arrive with tiny variations that threw off the line. Technicians were forced to perform software updates and manual adjustments on moving vehicles. The plant was in a constant state of reaction, fighting fires instead of refining a stable process. The dream of a simple, repeatable build process was lost in a daily war against the truck's own design. Long before the first truck was built, a number was planted in the public's mind, $39,900. But that price was a ghost from a different reality, a reality where stainless steel was easy to work with, where you didn't need specialized tools and armies of inspectors. By the time the Cybertruck hit production, the bill of materials, labor costs, and scrap rates had pushed the base price to over $60,000. The dream of an affordable electric truck was gone, the promises kept shrinking. The truck's heavy steel body and blocky aerodynamics were a drag on the battery. Real-world range, especially when towing or in the cold, was falling 20 to 25% short of official numbers, and far short of its main rivals. The laws of physics were cashing checks the marketing had written. Reservations, which were cheap enthusiasm, didn't convert to sales once the final invoice arrived. Meanwhile, the competition hadn't been sleeping. While Tesla was solving $1,000 problems with million-dollar solutions, Ford and Rivian were simply delivering trucks. Trucks that looked normal, trucks that body shops knew how to repair, trucks that fit into the world as it was. For all its futuristic bravado, the Cybertruck was being beaten by the boring, dependable present. The final verdict was written on the lots in Texas. As production slowly ramped up, demand cooled. Thousands of unsold Cybertrucks began to accumulate a silent testament to a price the market wouldn't bear and a design whose costs couldn't be contained. The numbers simply didn't add up. The pinball machine of cost had tilted and every bumper was sending the ball toward the same drain. The Cybertruck wasn't a failure of vision. It was a failure to respect the factory floor. The problem started the day the skin became the skeleton. Every choice made to serve that one, radical idea created two new problems downstream. In the end, the trap wasn't the stainless steel itself. The trap was believing a revolutionary idea could ignore the simple, brutal realities of making things at scale. The lesson isn't to stop taking risks. It's to understand them.
the quiet winds of manufacturability will always beat the loud promises of a concept car. The hardest material to work with wasn't the steel. It was reality.